Hello, this is Chip McGee, and uh, we're here for our uh, December uh, uh, episode of uh, Pelham School District Today. And today we're talking with two kindergarten teachers and talking about the kindergarten program as it is in Pelham now, um, and uh, a little bit of speculation about where it might go um, eventually. So let's start with introductions. Jen, would you start? Just sure. tell us who you are and I am what Jen, you do. Jen Pendergast. Jen Pendergast. There we go. Um, kindergarten teacher. Yep. Jenna. Shannon Milsa, kindergarten teacher. Good. And so thank you both for, for being here. I know it was touch and go getting us to start on time because they were uh, uh, meeting with a family. And um, uh, so I have a set of questions here for you. I thought we'd kind of go back and forth and chime in. Um, so I'm starting with you, Jen. Sure, that's fine. All right. Uh, fine. So could you just kind of walk us through what does the kindergarten program look like in terms of schedules and activities sure. of the classroom? Sure. So first I want to say that the kindergarten program this year obviously looks different. Like right? everything else. Like life is different. But I think the thing that we are trying to keep in mind mm -hmm. is that this is their kindergarten experience. That's so right. therefore it's our responsibility to make it the best experience that we can right. Regardless of this what's is happening. their one year. Of this is their kindergarten year. And That's right. We always say kindergarten is unique. It's mm -hmm. a unique school year. Um, so right now, the way kindergarten is working, we have a group of children that come to school full day Tuesday and Wednesday, mm -hmm. and then we have a group of children that come full day Thursday and Friday. So AM and PM out. Out. Right. This year, it's Tuesday, th Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Thursday, Friday. Okay. And then no. Nobody attends school on Mondays, mm -hmm. so because basically the teachers are on full time mm -hmm. <laughs> Tuesday through Friday, mm -hmm. so we need time to prep, plan, have parent meetings, and all of those things. So um, the district has been gracious enough to allow that to occur. Well, on where Mondays. normally a high school teacher would, you know, teach a class uh, and then maybe not have a class and then teach two classes depending on their schedule. Exactly. That's not the case for you. No. You've got them. All day from when they pull in to when they pull out. Absolutely. So, yeah. All right. So our, you know, we are a developmental kindergarten, mm -hmm. and really what that means is that we're meeting the needs of children where they're at. Mm -hmm. And um, New Hampshire has passed play-based kindergarten legislation, mm -hmm. which means that the learning is as much as possible. Our learning is through play. Mm -hmm. So with that said, the schedule of our day follows sort of a similar schedule in that we have a literacy block and we have a math block. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly we're keeping in mind that those things when you're five can happen all day throughout the day yeah, and yeah. primarily through play. We know that children learn best through hands-on activities. Mm -hmm. um, so if you walk into our classroom, you just, it's not that you won't see worksheets, um, but it's, it's rare to see worksheets. The mm -hmm. primary thing that you're seeing is um, some bit of multi-sensory kind of play. So, so it, for the literacy, like what, you have a literacy block, but right. they're, uh, they're not reading Charles Dickens or something like that. So what do they actually do for <laughs> so, a family who's thinking about Right. So uh, we have the program that we follow at Pelham Elementary School for phonics is called um, Foundations. Foundations. So Foundations, F-U-N. And um, <laughs> so we, this has different components, and Shannon can certainly add mm -hmm. to this. But um, so there is... Yes, a paper and pencil, if you will, in that there's a fine motor component. There's a lot of what we call finger tracing. So we might introduce the letter A, mm -hmm. and A has a letter and a visual mm -hmm. along with the sound. All of those things are in there to help us auditorially, but also to help us visually as we're learning that letter. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of finger tracing in our books. We color our letters in. Um, yes, we learn to write those letters with uh, markers and dry erase boards. We also do sky writing. So it's really asking children to use their whole body mm -hmm. to sort of engage in what the letters are. Well, you know, it's, it, it's interesting because I, I come at it uh, not having ever taught at the elementary level, let alone kindergarten, um, uh, from a more academic point of view. And, and Foundations is one of the kind of uh, solid anchors in research base early literacy. Mm -hmm. um, so my lens is not... Uh, is that that's about as strong a program as you could pick for, uh, for kindergarten. And your lens is play-based, so we're kind of getting a little bit of both there. Right. And so certainly we 
that is our primary phonics, but then there's there's so much more to liter literacy than simply phonics. So mm -hmm. we also are using guided reading as our reading approach. Um, and the state of New Hampshire does ask us as kindergarten teachers to primarily teach reading through guided reading. Mm -hmm. So we've started groups a little bit earlier this year, mm. and um, it's actually been interesting as we've pivoted to remote. I was oh. fortunate enough to be able to send books home with my children, but we're still being able to do our little reading groups um, through the computer. And oh, so what that looks like yeah. at the kindergarten level, you know, sometimes parents will say, well, I feel like they've, they're they memorizing the story. And really that's an important part of reading. Yeah. So they're simply just learning how to track the print, that the picture matches the words, mm -hmm. they're moving their finger as they read. Left to right. Um, mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yeah. exactly. So, so Shannon, I'm gonna ask a similar question, but uh, just a little twist. So mm -hmm. uh, for, for community members who are watching or parents of uh, uh, youngsters who haven't started kindergarten yet, what's different about uh, modern kindergarten compared to when uh, uh, when we were younger and we went? So I, I think that we're doing a lot more. Mm. Our standards and our expectations are so much higher and they jump to that challenge. I mean Reading should never be a race. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a competition. It shouldn't be a race. Right. But we start that early reading in mm -hmm. kindergarten now. I, I certainly don't think I had a book in my hands until first or second, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, first or second grade. But there's that. Mm -hmm. And um, given that I am the digital remote teacher this year, <laughs> yep. technology. Yeah. Technology is just... Kindergarten now, we didn't have that. Mm -hmm. We didn't have that piece. Mm -hmm. um, so the kids, just to make sure it's clear, the, uh, I know you know that I know, but I'm going to ask anyway. So sure. your kids are logging on every day and looking through the computer at so you? So many of them are doing it independently, too. Oh my logging gosh. on. I feel like they're going to learn telling time this year, too. Uh-huh. Why is not, that? Not by nature of that I'm teaching it, mm -hmm. but that they have a schedule, they know when to log on, or I project a timer. I mean, they're, they were learning numbers while we were still learning shapes. Mm -hmm. By the nature of the... Just kind of the complete being, experience. Yeah, being in remote and learning the computer and the fact that there's numbers on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that's a big difference. And I think we're doing more social-emotional, too. I mean, the Talk play, to me about that, because I... Uh, uh, having come into the district, yeah. uh, it's been one of my greatest concerns without s students being able to connect with each other as much, certainly last spring and now that yeah. we're remote again. Um, wh what sort of things are happening in kindergarten having to do with student social-emotional growth? I think, you know, the play is still there, mm -hmm. but we do a lot more of the direct instruction mm -hmm. teaching mm -hmm. of social-emotional skills. Like what? To Can you give a for instance? To give the language. For instance, like, we teach a lot about feelings. We teach a lot mm -hmm. about feelings, which I think is so necessary this year. Um, we really, in the past couple of years, have revamped a lot of our social-emotional learning curriculum mm -hmm. to give the kids yeah. um, that language and deeper understanding. Mm -hmm. Um, of that rather than, oh, they're just in centers and they're playing. Yeah. We're assisting them. We're talking about, oh, remember when the guidance counselor came in mm -hmm. and, you know, she taught us about this, making those connections to those lessons. Yeah, so they have the words that go with the feelings that yes. may come up in this challenging time. That's good. Yeah. And so um, I have a much more practical question. Sure. Uh, so uh, back in August, the question was, uh, is anyone going to wear masks? Can the little ones handle it? Um, so now that we're in December, uh, what's the what's the judgment? Can the little ones handle masks? Absolutely, so, absolutely. It is. It's not even. So at the beginning of the year, you know, we talked heavily about mask breaks mm -hmm. and the need for all of these mask breaks and. If children went outside to play at recess time, they could take their masks off if they were separated from one another. Mm -hmm. Well, five-year-old children quickly realized the benefit of playing together far outweighed the inconvenience of covering their face. Mm -hmm. They want to be with their friends. Um, and, you know, it's very interesting. They have learned 
we talk a lot about our emotions, feelings, reading each other's faces. Well, we can't quite see everything that we used to be able to see, mm -hmm. but they, so they're learning how to read eyes like they've never, I don't think people have had to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so they're really right, tuning we're taking away all the other clues everything down else here. Is gone. Right. So they got to get it all from mm -hmm. here. And they can, well, so the, it, it has not been a, it has not been an issue. There's a, there are times of the day that we do our mass breaks, mm -hmm. um, but there have also been times that I say to the class, would you like to go outside for a mass break or would you like to do this? We'll do that. So yeah, it's almost, I think that's interesting. It's almost like they're so young that they have a they flexibility right. that uh, yep. at least I know gets a little harder and harder for me every year. Um, all right, that's helpful that, and, and very encouraging. Um, all right, so now we're going to project into the future. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We do not have a full day kindergarten right now nor are we proposing it because it has a budget impact for next year. Um, but it's been something discussed in the community. Pelham's one of the few mm -hmm. in New Hampshire that doesn't have um, full day kindergarten. And so uh, I'll ask this to, to yeah. both of you. What, what would full day kindergarten be like? What, what, would, uh, what do you think of the, the benefits and the, and the costs too? And um, can kids handle being in, in kindergarten all day? So I mean, I think we've wanted full day for a long time mm -hmm. as teachers. At the same token, I was part of the committee that got kindergarten into poems. Oh, so I appreciate having half day kindergarten. Yep. So we knew kind we you know we didn't have kindergarten in Pelham for so many years. So I think the thing is, as New Hampshire is looking at play based kindergarten, and we have attended some trainings. We are so charged up by what can happen in a kindergarten classroom, mm -hmm. but we are held back by limitations of time. Mm -hmm. So sometimes in a half day program, while I am amazed at how much we have been able to cover, I sometimes continue to feel that we're not giving going in as deep as we could be going in mm. or allowing children to really bring their ideas to the plate as much as we'd like them to. Um, in addition, quite frankly, I think it really helps modern day families. Mm. Um, and, yeah, and that's a really a reality. Level. It's a reality. Um, I, I sometimes think, boy, if I had you five days doing this all day long, how much further it would be. Um, and that's a, yeah, that's a bit of a struggle this year because we're definitely, we've, we've lost that We well, only have two days on and then five days yeah, And off. so, I, you know, for some of our children, that day back to kindergarten is starting all over again. Yeah, yeah. And that's tricky. Um, so do you have any, uh, for instances, examples of things that you thought, oh, if we, and I won't hold you to it, but the sorts of things that you would love to be able to do if you had full five day oh, a week? so <laughs> many things. I think of our whole um, writing program, mm -hmm. and writing is really challenging to get to because there's other priorities. And when you look at... We have to remember that Common Core mm -hmm. is written for full day kindergarten. And we don't have full day kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So what are the most important things from Common Core that we need to cover so children are continue to be successful moving to first grade? Yep. Um, but I also look at outside time. And half day kindergarten didn't give us that ability to have children go outside. But there is a vast world outside our classroom doors and there's much to be learned and we would love to engage them in mm -hmm. nature. Yeah, more writing, more time outside. Science and social Science studies. And Mm -hmm. we, we cover those through our center time, but not as a separate direct instruction block. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked about oh, a garden for years. We've talked about mm -hmm. putting right. a garden, and right. but the time, yep. time, is, time is a valuable yeah. asset. I it think really even, is. Chip, sometimes it's just looking at favorite storybooks that we want to read and you look at the clock, ah, we're out of time. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, again, joy, we want kindergarten to be a joyful experience for children, and mm -hmm. I want them to have memories that are long-lasting. And while I see all the value in the academics, mm -hmm. um, I want to make sure that we're balancing it so that it has those joyful components as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing I always remind myself is that um, uh, students, whether they're kindergartners or high schoolers, um, if they are um, happy and enjoying themselves and having um, those sorts of experiences, the learning just it just right. absorbs. Mm -hmm. um, and if they're miserable, um, it doesn't. It just doesn't stick in the same mm -hmm. way. 
Um, so uh, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, I'm going to speak to the next question because it's really not fair for me to ask you. It's, it's a policy thing. But um, so one of the things I found when I got here was that there was a big question about space. Um, and uh, I don't have it resolved in terms of where uh, a full day kindergarten would go, but it'd have a big impact on space. Mm -hmm. um, my hunch would be is that our three classrooms here, and I'll call it three even though everything's weird this year, but mm -hmm. we have three <laughs> classrooms in, in, uh, in the, the uh, kindergarten annex, mm -hmm. uh, uh, would likely have to be six or seven if we went to full day. Because those would be full, filled with kids all day, mm -hmm. right. and then the afternoon would have to get three classrooms. And usually, what happens is that really pulls in some more kids uh, mm -hmm. uh, in towns that have done this in the past. Um, and so, I was very concerned with the middle school or memorial school project. Did we need to move fifth grade to create space here to have space mm -hmm. for full day kindergarten? Mm -hmm. And um, I was fortunate uh, uh, that in August we. Um, and have been working with uh, an architect on that project, and they did, um, at very low cost, a uh, capacity study of Pelham Elementary School, um, which made it clear that given current enrollment projections, while it would be a full school, Pelham Elementary School, plus those three classrooms, could handle full-day kindergarten. Um, and so uh, it would uh, not require <clears throat> a new construction, a little bit of reconfiguring and certainly additional staff. Um, but uh, that was something very encouraging for Absolutely. me that, mm -hmm. uh, that it, uh, I see it as um, right now next on the list, um, uh, hopefully with the Memorial School project uh, going forward and then, and then getting after it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, one thing that uh, I thought might be kind of a nice uh, culminating uh, comment here uh, is what is one thing that kindergarten parents of kindergartners could do that would help you uh, help their kids? It's hard to, okay. I think that I, what I would suggest is that we make sure that we are communicating with our children. Mm. And by that, I mean children notice and wonder about everything, mm -hmm. right? It's just their natural disposition. So whether you are out for a walk and they're noticing acorns, maybe you stop and you have a conversation about those acorns, but maybe that conversation then gets to go a little bit further because maybe you're counting the number of acorns. Mm -hmm. um, so I just love that interaction. You're in the grocery store, your child's helping you, but you're talking as you do it. Mm -hmm. um, I just, children that are comfortable talking and answering questions and asking questions about the world around them mm -hmm. are just so, I think, eager to learn new things that are then put in front of them. Mm -hmm. So just explore no matter where you are. I think sees everything that's out here for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. Shannon, any advice you'd have? Um, exercise and sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yes. I think where we are in this yeah. pandemic and with this change in season, first mm -hmm. day of winter's coming, yes. we have a nor'easter, on the forecast. Uh huh. I saw that. Just because the weather is there, they still need to go outside, get the snow pants on. Mm -hmm. You know, bundle up. They need exercise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say kindergartners so much so, but I think all of our kids, those high school kids too. Yeah. I mean, some exercise and fresh air. You know, I think that that one applies to uh, the adults as well. Right? Probably true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The exercise right. and sleep are one and two on yeah. my list. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, share one if I could, uh, and it uh, I, it comes third in line. I, I, um, but there's there's one that um, as a uh, convert to the power of uh, uh, early childhood education. Mm -hmm. I was a I was a high school science mm -hmm. teacher, and so it's been just a revelation watching what happens in. K one and two, mm -hmm. it's just incredible. Um, is the power of just reading to mm -hmm. your kid, um, mm -hmm. and even if you're mm -hmm. reading your own boring thing, mm -hmm. you know, reading out loud your uh, newspaper article uh, right. or um, uh, you the the recipe that you're working Absolutely. on that night, mm -hmm. um, or the, just the same story over again. All of that's just All fine. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and right there at your fingertips. Yep. I remember um, as I got coached up as a young parent that was a relief to know you didn't have to go find no. some fancy special book no. just read what yep. you have in front of you
Agreed. Well, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, I, this is a very nice check-in, um, and uh, this wraps up uh, the December edition of Pelham School District Today.